What's going on future top producer Alexander Fuzzolani here and today we are going to discuss the four things you should have when you first get your real estate license but before we do that please like subscribe and share this with somebody that you feel really needs it and we can continuously bring this to you every Tuesday and Friday for the freest of 99s. So I've been in the industry for 10 years. I've, I've got into this industry not knowing much about how the industry worked and i threw spaghetti at the wall a lot until i developed systems and then you know i i further my skills by signing up for mentorships and so on and so forth to develop my skills to eventually where i was able to kind of step out of the business and still make money as a real estate agent right um which is which is uh, most agents don't make it past the first five years right in, in, the, in the industry and the reason being is that there's no real structure and they came into the industry and they kind of burn out or they don't really know how to run the business. So let's dive right into what you should be having to build that solid foundation, right? So if we were digging a hole and we were planting a seed, we need that that strong foundation, that organic matter, matter that's really going to help you um, take your career, which is the seed, and really sprout to a beautiful tree. All right. so. Let's dive into the first thing. The first thing is I would become an admin or some type of, um, you know, gopher or showing agent for a highly successful agent in your office. So when you join an office, identify the top producing agents and then start helping them out, start being a resource to them. The reason why I say become a, re uh, a resource to them and not asking them, Hey, can you be my mentor is because if you're just asking them to be your mentor, they're going to see it as work. <laughs> they're be like, oh, I need to work on you. And what's the benefit for me? I'm going to teach you everything I know. And then you're going to grow and, and surpass me, right? What you want to do is, hey, I see you're uh, a top producing agent office. I want to learn from you, but I don't want your your service to be free. So what is it that you need me to do? If you need me to do showings, I'll do showings for you. If you need me to push paper around or whatever, I just want to be able to see what you're doing and how you're doing it. But for the time being, I just want to be your assistant. So pi picture me as your assistant. I'll carry your paperwork. I'll carry your things. Just let me shadow a couple of listing presentations here and there, and that will be my payment, right? So working for free, which is not very popular for a lot of people, right? But if you can and you can manage that, I highly recommend it because that'll help your growth part process, you know, go really, really fast compared to a lot of agents who kind of don't really see any type of money for the first two years of their business. I went negative $8,000 my first year because I didn't really have any idea what to do. However, once I started taking it seriously and identifying what top producing agents were doing, I took it and ran with it. Which leads us to number two, creating your business plan. You're going to want to know how many numbers, like your numbers that you need to hit. You want to know your prospecting um, strategies. You want to have your marketing strategies all plotted out so you can revisit every week and you can stay on track, right? A business plan is geared to make you stay on your on track in your business. If you don't have anything that you're following, you're going to get lost and everything. The magic pills are going to pop up and you're going to start taking the magic pills left and right. You're going to be like realtor.com is better than Zillow and then Zillow is better than this and so on. And you're going to be hopping from one service to another service and, you know, having all these different tools, but utilizing none of them if you have a couple that you're you're really mastering that's the key to true success consistency is success so what we want to do is have a business plan that we can follow if you there's a bunch of business plans out there however if you want to learn a little more about design for agents business plan we use it for our teams i've been utilizing it for a long time it helps you break your number down identify your prospecting mix um creating a commitment um uh, accountability situation so on and so forth you can check and learn more about that in the description below all right, so first thing, find a mentor, become their assistant, or add value to some type of top producer in your agent so that you can create a mentor um, in, your, in, in your first year. The second thing is create a personal business plan where you know your numbers and you can identify your numbers, know what the average sales volume is, so on and so forth in your business. The third thing is build a foundation for your sphere of influence. So most people, they, they dive into prospecting, trying to build up a, a cold database, right? That's great, but you should have a foundation of people that you can reach out to right off the bat, people that you know from your past employers. Um, and what I mean by that is just connecting with people. You don't have to necessarily um, 
like call them and be like, hey, I'm in real estate now if you know somebody, right? Just connect with them, like, hey, how's everything going? I, I just, you know, I was bored. I just wanted to reach out to you, see how everything is going. Everything's going great. What you been up to? Oh, I've, I'm in real estate now, so I've been, you know, working on, on building my book of influence, selling property, so on and so forth. I actually just met this really cool mentor, blah, 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 and I'm getting that. Oh, cool, if I know anybody, I'll let you know. All right, great. That's usually how the first conversation should go. And from there, it's up to you to nourish that relationship, invite them out every so often, maybe connect with them um, at an event, or be like, hey, I had, I, I read this book, I was thinking of you. You know what I'm saying? You really wanna build the, that foundation because those people are the ones that are going to refer you business down the line, and nothing is better than having referrals or warm leads given to you, right? And then from there, your jo only job is to start adding people into that sphere of influence by cold prospecting, so connecting with people, right? Which leads us to number four, our last, uh, last thing that you should do is creating your prospecting and marketing mix, right? So now you have your foundation of, of your sphere of, your first sphere of influence. Your job is to start building on top of that. How I recommend doing it, which is the easiest and the freest of 99, is find an agent in your office or someone that's not even in your office, like, hey, I want to run an open house for you. You promote that open house, you door knock around that open house and start really connecting with neighborhoods that you want to work and invite people to the open house. Throw a mega open house. If you want to learn more about the mega open house strategy, check that out in the link below as well. I'll, I'll shoot a link there. But you really want to start um, connecting with people in the neighborhood that you're working. Um, people who walk into open houses are usually interested in real estate, so it's easier to connect with people, get their numbers, um, you know, really dive into who they are, what their their motivations are. Are you planning on moving? Are you not planning on moving? You know, all those basic questions that everybody should be asking but most importantly they see you as a good person they see you as someone that's connecting with the neighborhood and adding value to the neighborhood um, that's what you really want to to set forth and really build those relationships and, and connecting with people and you can only do that through for me for the freest of 99s like for for the cheapest is you put out some flyers you get some fire flyers going which is, fire flyers are handwritten letters that you make copies of so they look like they're handwritten and you just go around the neighborhood that you're doing the open house with, give them the, the fire flyer if they're not home. If they are home, you just connect and say, hey, I have this open house. If you know, um, you know, you or your family members trying to move into area. Oh, by the way, have, how long have you lived here, right? And I'm telling you, if you do that consistently twice a weekend or once a weekend even, you're going to find more opportunities, which is going to allow you to build your book of business, but also get more listings, get, and then further on, get more opportunities. So there you have it. Those are the four things that you should be doing when you first get your real estate license. Let's recap them real quick. You should find a mentor, become their assistant, become their shadow, be of value to them. Second is you need to create a business plan. If you don't have one already or have no idea how to get one, we have one in the link below. Um, start building your foundation of your sphere of influence that you're gonna start connecting with consistently in order to build a relationship and nourish those relationships. And then four, you're gonna to have to create a, a prospecting marketing mix, which is going to help you build your sphere of influence until your book of business is large and you can start bringing on buyer's agents and seller's agents and step away from the business and again to investing, so on and so forth, right? So that's how you do it. That's the foundation. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And with that being said, I'm wishing you many happy clients, many accepted offers, and a whole lot of closings. And I'll see you in the next video.